Indrajal Ranger, that's India's first anti-drone petrol vehicle and comes at a very opportune time when there are huge security concerns about the trafficking not just of weapons but also drugs through the drone route from across the border. I have with me Kiran Raju who is the CEO of uh, the company that's made this. Uh, what this is this going to add to the arsenal of our police or defense forces? It is, it is going to add to the arsenal of, uh, of the border force uh, and primarily the police, right? Uh, as well as critical infrastructure security force, uh, most of the paramilitary, because uh, they are the ones who are protecting our hinterland. Um, and today, the, today in a peacetime situation, the drones that are entering our country are not really uh, mass weapons, but they are carrying um, contraband weapons. So, so most of the paramilitary forces are the ones protecting it, um, and then that's 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 really uh, what it is custom built for. It looks very very fancy. Of course, this is uh, customized to uh, be in the border, be uh, take hardy conditions as well. Tell us more about. That. So it is it is meant to fit on a very thin road, like a village. At the same time, go off road onto the border, right? And pr third third most important thing. It should be able to um, use the use the anti-drone systems while the vehicle is moving, which is very rare uh, because fundamentally you cannot use radars, you cannot use other systems. So fundamentally, these key technologies that we used were able to ensure um, that the system will actually operate while it's on the move. Because once you detect a drone, let's say 10 kilometers out, you, there is no way we have mitigation technologies that can operate at 10 kilometers. We have mitigation technologies that can operate about 4 kilometers. So I have to move the vehicle while I am still tracking the drone to get to the interception point and then capture the, uh, the, the drone. So while that is manual, the entire capturing of the drone and all of this is fully autonomous. So the system has the capacity to do all that without any human intervention. The concern would be that such a fancy vehicle, uh, would it get detected even long distance and uh, is that a safety concern? I would say that because most of the op because fundamentally mobile, so it's never going to stop at one location, right? So even if they detect it, it they're not going to understand five kilometers out which direction I'm going. So, so ideally uh, at night time, especially the fundamentally why it's dark is because most of these operations are happening from 6 p.m., uh, 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. So it it is completely concealed in the night. So there's no way that you will be able to recognize that so and so is moving. In a, in a certain particular location, right? Show us uh, the features of this vehicle also and explain to us what it is like. I'll show you the first and the first, because the closest. Mm -hmm. So all the communication equipment is put into this box, box yeah, right? Box. And you see the other uh, box there, which I'll show it from that side also, mm -hmm. is, is, is the command and control and electrical box, right? So the communication systems, which is, you know, these, these poofers and these are the antenna okay. that pretty much detect uh, the drones and be able to mitigate electronic war using electronic warfare, right? Then obviously there is the interceptor drone, uh, which 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 will uh, be able to launch uh, in in case electronic warfare fails. Then the interceptor drone is launched and this is this actually goes and intercepts the uh, the threat um, and in most cases follows the threat. Fundamentally, the rogue drone is going to drop a weapon in a village, in the middle of the village. I want to know which house it's dropping on. So this can actually go there and give me a video, top-down video of where exactly, and it also has night vision. So in the night also, it can show me, okay, this is the location where it has so what range are we talking about? This one, about two kilometer range. Yeah, it can, so I will launch it within the two kilometer range of the village. It will go there, it will give me the viewpoint, it will give me the location of where it drops, so at least I know intelligence-wise where the operation is happening. Right. So, in this part, now, now when you come to this part, this is the main operator cabin. These are the main systems for for the operator to utilize. But fundamentally, if you see, there are no other buttons. There's only one red button. That means that if the system is what it does autonomously, it'll do. But when the autonomy is not doing something right, the the operator just hits that to stop it. So, fundamentally, the system is automated. So, you're not like entering keyboards or doing anything. It's, it's automated. But you will have to, the operator can stop it when it's needed. Right? So what are the scenarios in which this gets used? You have spoken about a border, a long border, in which this is a moving vehicle that is able to detect any drones that come by, 10 kilometer range, and you told us three options that uh, will happen uh, in, uh, in the manner in which it will detect or destroy a drone. 
Yeah. So, so it will detect 10 kilometers. When it comes to 4 kilometer range, the first line of defense is cyber takeover. Cyber takeover will hack the drone and try to bring it and land it beside the vehicle. Uh, and if that doesn't work, for some, whatever reason, it can work on 60% of drones, it might not work on 40% of drones. Then the second layer of defense is called soft kill, uh, aggressive soft kill. So it, it uses navigational spoofing to kill, to crash the drones. And the third line of defense is the interceptor, right? So all three lines of defense enables that the, 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 the vehicle is thorough uh, in, in, in border security uh, use case. And in that interceptor, it's able to handle multiple drones at the same time? Interceptor, no, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. But the soft kill, the second layer of defense, the soft kill can handle any number of drones at the same time. Because in the two kilometer radius, it will kill everything. And, uh, will this have a, uh, you know, work in the urban scenario as well, where we are talking about high security buildings, for instance? Uh, uh, in urban spaces, uh, you have to think uh, religious gatherings, political gatherings, um, VVIP convoy movement. Uh, uh, embassies, CM house, these are all uh, fundamental uh, areas that need uh, protection, right? Um, and, and I think uh, that's why these, this these system is also built for road maneuverability versus uh, like if you took a typical vehicle-based anti-drone system, it, it, it's, a, it's a massive vehicle uh, with a, with a uh, probably an 18-foot uh, container on the back and, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, this is this this is primarily uh, for urban spaces. Yeah. And uh, what is the legal position? Like you mentioned, several areas will be red zones where you know drone flying also is regulated. How do you? May, I mean, is this uh, something that now uh, not even the police, not the authorities, but even perhaps a person who is uh, having or having an industry, for instance, which may be a very sensitive industry, can deploy something like this? Yeah. Private sector. Yeah, private sector, oil and gas refineries. Um, uh, factor, phosphorus factories, any any chemical factories, uh, they, they also require uh, a level of security, um, and 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 that's why uh, with this system, uh, power is already taken care of, uh, communication infrastructure is taken care of, so there is no, it's like almost commoditized, commoditized for it, for us to uh, take it there and deploy it, right? So that that's what makes it. Uh, it's a standalone system that can operate. Yeah, which can operate, right? Which will be able to stop those uh, drones. So that way, there's a tremendous value, and it also has to be approved by Home Ministry uh, under regulatory body ARDTC. So we are now going to go through that process as well. Uh, so, so uh, once it is approved, then anybody can uh, buy it and deploy it. And globally, you have these kind of uh, uh, technology available, petrol vehicles available, which are. I think uh, globally also there are a lot of early stage, uh, more in uh, uh, IDEX events and always where we see some petrol vehicles, but nothing with the nothing with the th three layer defense that we have. Thank you so much Thank and you. many congratulations. Thank so you. the uh, startup that started in Hyderabad now giving us something that could be a global solution against drones and in a petrol vehicle, which is quite a unique position to be in in Hyderabad with. कैमरा पर्सन नागराजू उमा सुधीर एनडीटीवी